What the... Where am I? When I awoke, I was in an all-white room. At first, I thought I was dreaming. White walls, white ceiling, white floor, white bed. White, white, white. Oh no. Is this after the incident at school? It was all too surreal. That reminds me. When we first met, she was wearing a white dress, too. Time passed, and my fuzzy mind gradually sharpened. Then I realized this was no dream. Hello? I looked around, but couldn't see anyone. I was all alone in this sanitized space. Not just that. I was trapped. Can someone please come in here? It's me, Alistair! Someone! Arisa! Dr. Arisa! I screamed and pounded on the white walls with my fists. It's me! Alistair! Fortunately, Ryoshi came running just moments later. Oh, thank goodness. I was going to be so sad. Phew. Ryoshi. What did I do? Gretel beat up a classmate. Sent him to the hospital. He did. Of all your personalities, Gretel and Kagi are the most dangerous. Gretel has no sympathy for anyone who isn't Yuriko, and Kagi tends towards self-harm. Not all of your personalities have your best interests at heart. The next day, I was allowed to go back home. When I checked the calendar, I realized I was missing a few days' worth of memories. Right. I understand. Thank you very much. As she spoke on the phone, Yurika grinned gleefully. Come to think of it, what was she doing here at noon on a weekday? Oh no, did she really do that crazy thing? Girl. Did she really do that in reality, where she just, like, threw a chair out the window? I think that's what happened. I was like, I'll just be crazy like him, and then I'll also have to stay home from school. Whee! Okay. Guess what? They said you won't be expelled! You don't have to feel bad about this, Alistair. It wasn't your fault. So it was Gretel's fault. No, I don't think it was his fault either. God, you always... <laughs> I swallowed the rest of the sentence. Blaming her wouldn't fix anything. Shouldn't you be at school, Arsa? No, it's okay. How come? Well... In the end, she never did answer the question. Then one morning, as my suspicions toward her grew... When I awoke, she was lying next to me. <gasps> Again? I hastily bolted upright. At the time, I figured Gretel must have wanted more cuddles. Arisa? She must have been tired, because she didn't stir. Wait. But when I went to adjust the covers, I felt something wet. Oh, no, 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 boy. <laughs> ah! I just, oh, my, I got, like, goosebumps, like, all over my arms. I'm just, like, I feel so bad for Alice. I'm just, like... Man. No way. Mm. I clapped both hands over my mouth. Intense discomfort welled inside me as my stomach threatened to empty itself. 
<laughs> Quietly, to avoid waking her, I slipped out of the room. <coughs> After I puked up everything in my stomach, I washed my underwear in the sink, then stared at myself in the mirror. Who was it? Gretel? No, it wasn't him. He only thinks of her as a sister. Then was it Kaguya? Or Cinderella? Who the hell did she- I couldn't bear to finish the sentence. My chest was filled with a muddy mix of anger and sadness and disappointment and jealousy, and it was driving me insane. Assuming I wasn't well past that point already. Yeah, I mean, like, how... How, how are you jealous at a party yourself? And you have, like, no control over it. And it's like, well, why that one and not me, who's the original? Oh, man. I can't even imagine. <laughs> are you all in love with her? Is that why you slept with her? And she's not innocent in this either. Why the hell would she do that? Is she... in love with all of you, too? Just then. Alice, are you okay? Are you feeling sick? She had woken up and come to check on me. How did she know it was going to be Alice who woke up? Out of all of them. Arisa. When I looked at her, the image of us having sex came to mind. It wasn't the first time I'd ever thought about it, of course. But it felt like I hadn't earned the right to look at her in that way, so I had turned a blind eye to it. I'm fine. You sure? Arisa and I had sex. But it wasn't me. After that, I started openly avoiding her. Hey, Alice? What? She had probably noticed. Sorry, but I've got an errand to run. Mind if I head out? Oh, sure. <sighs> I never meant for things to get this bad. That means your feelings, man. It's, I don't even know how I would deal with that, honestly. I think I would also just be like, feel like I'm going insane. I had a dream. In the dream, Eureka and I wandered through the forest, just the two of us. So where do we go from here? I don't know, but it'll work out. I'm going to keep you safe. Sister. Then I came to my senses and stopped short. Oh boy. Gretel? Arisa? Why am I- When I looked at her, my heart nearly stopped. Her face was bandaged up. Oh no, the rape attempt actually happened as well? Okay, I was I was wondering how much from Gretel's route like actually happened. A lot of it actually happened. Great, wonderful. Huya, glad to get confirmation on that. <laughs> how did you get those wounds? Well, go. Just then, a jolt of searing pain shot through my body. What's wrong? Are you okay? I looked down at my aching fists. And froze. <laughs> ah! My hands were dripping with fresh blood. Why? Blood? Alistair, calm down! Uh, uh, oh god, did I? No! You didn't do anything, Alistair. Please believe me! So it was one of the others? Was it Gretel? Or someone else? Kaguya? No, it wasn't! I can't take this anymore! I'm sick of this! Alistair!
I soon learned all the details. When Ryoshi came to get us, he told me the whole story. So where the heck, where the hecky hey was she taking that boy out into the woods? Like, it's okay, we'll just like walk out into the forest. Because, okay, so in Gretel's route, they do, they do just go out into the forest. And luckily there's a cabin and, you know, it's got a big cage and it. it's perfect for imprisonment, blah, blah, blah. Obviously that doesn't happen in the real world. Ryoshi does come and find them and they, he gets the story. So then what happens after that? Oh, good grief. I'm just... I can't believe all this is happening. Again. Apparently, Gretel went to get revenge on the thugs who hurt her. But while I was relieved to learn I was innocent, I was still responsible for her getting hurt. While it wasn't your fault, per se, this comes immediately after the violent incident on campus. You should probably prepare yourself for expulsion. Right. Don't worry. It's just the worst case scenario. No matter what, you've got my sister, mother, and father in your corner. And I'll do everything I can to protect you too. How many times has this happened now? How many times was I going to cause problems for people who were only ever kind to me? Ryoshi, huh? Why are you so nice to me? Because I'm a hunter, obviously. Hmm? Healer of undiagnosed neurological trauma. It's an acronym. Oh. See, I wouldn't have chosen this path if it wasn't for a certain someone who gave me the push I needed. You may not have guessed, but blood gives me the heebie-jeebies. Hard to believe. I know, right? My parents never commented on it, but that only made it worse. It felt like they had no high hopes for me whatsoever. So I kept having second thoughts about med school. But then someone had to go and tell me he thought I'd be good at it. He said being a hunter was about more than looking at blood all day. Frankly, I still don't think I'm fit for the job, but I actually enjoy it quite a lot. So, basically the point I'm trying to get out here is, I want to heal you. I knew, of course. I knew Ryoshi was probably talking about one of my other personalities. After all, he had called me Snow White back when we first met. Is it really me he wants to save? Or is it Snow White? He wasn't the only one, either. Even Wolf only made friends with me because he was already friends with Red Riding Hood. It felt like I was being served their sloppy seconds. As I stood at the front door, it suddenly opened. Alistair! Welcome home! Arisa. What about her? She was an old friend from my childhood. Was she the only one who truly wanted me around? What's wrong? Sorry. I need to be alone for a while. But what she didn't know was... The version of me she met as a child was only a mirror reflection. Alistair... Alice. The me in the mirror. At first it was just a game. I was weak, cowardly, insecure, and friendless. And I hated that about myself. But my reflection was different. My reflection was a self-assured smartass who always spoke his mind. The polar opposite of me. It was a fantasy. And I talked to him like he was my imaginary friend. Even though I knew he was only my reflection. Just then. Out of the blue, I was struck by the feeling that I was being watched. <laughs> The mirror. 
I could sense that someone inside me was trying to reach out. Timidly, I looked in the mirror. Reflected back at me was a guy with a ribbon in his blonde hair. Who are you? Cinderella? Or Snow White? Or maybe Red Riding Hood? Kaguya? Gretel? I don't care who you are. Please stop using my body to do whatever you feel like. It's causing a lot of problems for me. Because of you guys, people treat me like a pathological liar and lock me up like I'm a nutcase. You people are ruining my life! Actually, I don't really mind if it's just my life you want to ruin. But I finally found people who care, so please stop dragging them down with me! Arisa is a really nice girl, and I bet she's nice to you guys too. But, how do you all feel about her? I love her. What? She remembered me. When we reunited, she held me and cried. She said she sent tons of letters. And she remembered the ribbon, too. Yeah, but... How about you stop pretending you don't see it? She's not looking at me. She's looking at the me on the other side. No. She's not nice to me because she has feelings for me. Question is, which of us does she truly love? You or me? Oh! Oh, that's why he broke the mirror. Oh, that's what that was from. <laughs> That was fr oh god okay so now we get that context from the wizard's root. Oh, at the end oh. Well, that smart ass came out <laughs> again. <laughs> Whew. What's wrong? Arsa. My hand tingled. Blood dripped to the floor. There I could see shards of glass. Oh, I get it. I broke the mirror. You're hurt! We better patch you up! Arisa. Who am I? What? Just now, in the mirror. I saw someone who wasn't me. It was me at first. But the next thing I knew, it turned into someone else. The mirror didn't reflect my face was showing someone who looked nothing like me. Then the person looked at me and told me they loved you. And that was when I realized. This other person probably wants me to leave. Then after I'm gone, they're going to take over my happy life with you. I'm scared. Really scared. Someone who isn't me lives inside me, using my body, pretending to be me. And when I'm in control, they spy on me from the darkness. Arisa, am I really me? Because I'm not sure I am. I mean, think about it. How can anyone prove whether the person you're talking to right now is really me? Maybe the real me is the one who isn't me at all. I'll always be on your side. And I'll always believe in you, even when you don't believe in yourself. Because I love you. Arisa. I'm sorry. I can't tell if you're actually talking to me or not. I... I can't even be sure that you love me. <laughs> That's alright. Huh? She held me gently. I don't mind if you reject my love. As long as you heal, that's all I care about. Because it doesn't change the fact that you're my prince. I can't sleep. I walked downstairs where I overheard what sounded like muffled sobs. Drawn in like a magnet, I followed the sound to its source. 
Arsa? The kitchen door had been left ajar, and I could see her through the crack. I don't know that I've ever actually, like, really seen Eureka sob much. Like, occasionally, but... It's a rare happening. <laughs> Soft, fluffy hair. Red and blue eyes. My princess was crying. I'm sure that probably brought back memories of his mom, too. Like, the last... The last memory of his mom that Alice has is her crying and being like, are you my Alice? Oh, gosh, my heart is shattering. The day I decided to do the deed, I called out to her first thing in the morning. Arisa? What is it, Alistair? She was smiling like always. It's nothing. But I knew the truth behind that smile. I pretended to go to school, but instead I went to the lake alone. There I pulled out the water bottle and sleeping pills I'd brought with me. Oh, hello, Kaguya. Okay, interesting, interesting. If I swallow all these... It should put me to sleep for a good long time. One can say that a dream is a reproduction or recreation of our memories. In most cases, the people and places that appear in your dreams are taken wholesale from your past. In a lucid dream, we can consciously control what happens within it. Maybe then I could finally talk to them. If I don't wake up, It'll destroy Arisa. I'm gonna make her cry all over again. But I don't want to keep hurting you. That's why I have to end this story once and for all. I'm doing it all for you, my beloved Arisa. Ooh. This brings us back to the start of the story. Having stumbled into the dream world, Alistair was swallowed by the darkness. And all that remained was me, Alice. Ah, oh, it's no use. He refuses to wake up. What an irksome little king. Or should I say prince? After a while, I sensed another presence with me. But it wasn't Cinderella, or Snow White, or Red Riding Hood, or Kaguya, or Gretel. It was another personality who had been hiding. And here I thought you were just a pawn. Can you hear me? I could hear her in the distance. It's her. Can you hear my voice? Yes, don't worry. I hear you loud and clear. Why? She was crying. What about you? Why are you crying? Please, wake up! Alistair! <sighs> In that instant, I could feel his heart break. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. It was always Alistair's name on her tongue. She talked to him endlessly, be it casual conversation or anguished pleas for him to wake up. But then one day something different happened. Can you hear me? Can you hear my voice? Yes, I hear you. I have a favor to ask. Something only you can do. Let's play pretend. I'll be the Ohime-sama. And you'll be the Mahatsukai. She spoke not to Alistair, but the hidden personality. Not king and queen. Sorry it's not the lead role, but it's still a really important part to play. Yes, I imagine so. A story always needs a plot device. I've already picked a setting, too. 
It's set in the looking glass world where everything is topsy-turvy. Amid a colorful cast of gender-flipped fairy tale characters, I'll take on the role of the heroine and join them in their twisted tales. How will the story end? It's up to me! Since there's no script, even I don't know what will happen. But I know what I want the ending to look like, and that's all that matters. Because I really love happy endings. But you knew that, didn't you? News to me. You see, the wizard has a very important role. Sometimes an ally, sometimes an enemy. The bearer of great and mysterious power. So in other words, you want to use me like a pawn. And when I mess up, I want you to kill me. The story can only have one heroine. Otherwise, it'll veer off track. So you'd have me undo the mistakes? Piece of cake for a guy like you, right? As you wish. After all, you're my strongest piece. But of course, I am your wizard. If you so desire, your majesty, I shall become whatever piece you need. Queen, rook, bishop, or knight. Now then, let the story begin! I could sympathize with this wizard a tiny bit. After all, his beloved was commanding him to help her get another guy. Pretty messed up, isn't it? <laughs> what a horrible love seven-sided shape, whatever that's called. <laughs> that. What a weird thing we are <laughs> together. Uh... Oh? Well, well. Nice to meet you. I am the wizard. Are you the king? No, I'm just a pawn. My name isn't Alistair. It's Alice. Alice? When I gave him my name, he seemed to put it all together. If you're here, does this mean the king is asleep? He is indeed. Good grief. The king of the looking glass world is such a spoiled little baby. Slow moving, constantly in need of protection, sacrificing others to keep himself safe. You can't blame him. If the king gets checkmated, it's game over. Unlike you or me, the king's the most valuable piece. He represents the player. Fair point. So, do you know everything? No. Unlike you, I am not all-powerful. Though it seems I have the same memories as Alistair. Hmm. Well then, it's safe to say you at least have an understanding of the situation. That's true. She's crying, you know. Not that I blame her, seeing as her beloved is in a coma. But what's truly frightening about her is that she isn't just sitting around, waiting. She seems intent on infiltrating the dream world to rescue him. And in order to save her prince, she will gift us with stories of our own. She probably thinks it's the only way. In order to heal Alistair, she will need to heal all those living inside his head. Normally this would take years, but she's trying to accomplish it in the span of just a few days. Frankly, she's being reckless. A licensed medical professional like her brother would never allow it. Well, she doesn't have the luxury of time. That's true. And time is ticking by as we speak. No point in standing around for much longer. She will soon arrive in this world. But it's not the real her. The king and queen created an idealized heroine based on how she appeared in his memories. And yet, she is the weakest pawn. If no one helps her, she may be consumed by the darkness before she ever reaches the looking glass world. Before that happens, someone must tell her that she is Eureka Arisa. And you want me to tell her? I had figured you would. 
Am I wrong? I hate taking orders from other people, and I have no interest in taking her hand either. <laughs> you refuse to be honest with yourself, don't you? If you're Alice, then you're the one who said the magic words. I love your gemstone eyes and soft, fluffy hair. It's what makes you, you. But she will surely choose Alistair over you. Every time she heals one of us, Alistair regains a little more of himself. And when she reaches the other side of the board, you'll no longer be you anymore. Not that I'm exempt myself, of course. After I have served my purpose, she will kill me. And all the personalities she healed. We are merely stepping stones to healing Alistair. And so she arrived in the world of darkness. Hello? Is anybody there? It's her. Oh, we actually get to see her in her fantastical outfit. Adorable. The darkness was attacking her. No! Stop it! Someone help! She was being consumed. No surprise there, of course, since she lacked a self. Who are you talking to? You! Me? No thanks. I'll pass. You're a selfish, weak, pathetic fool who can't do anything on your own. Why should I help a sad, petty, spoiled creature who has nary a shred of courage nor confidence? I called out into the darkness. Not to her, but to Alistair, who had also been consumed. Oh dang, you were calling out Alistair. Well, that lends a certain different context to our interactions in the beginning. It was his job to save her, not mine. What? Right now, the darkness is trying to consume you. Do you know why that is? Because you have no self. You don't know who you are, correct? I... Who are you? I... What's the matter? You can't even remember who you are. Well... I... I'm just me! Those were the words I had been waiting to hear. Good grief. You're completely hopeless. Here. Grab hold. I reached out to her. Oh, okay! We'll make a run for it! Right! Oh. We're safe here? Wait. What the? <laughs> and again. <sighs> Are you okay? Do I look okay to you? Not only did you run faster than me, you started dragging me along with you. I was supposed to be saving you, you Nimrod. Didn't anyone ever teach you how to stroke a man's ego? Oh, right! Wow, you were incredible! I'm so impressed! No, it was nothing. Gah! I see right through you, you snake! I know you expected me to buy your BS wholesale and get a big head about it, but it won't work, because everything you said was so blatantly phony! <laughs> I'm sorry, but I do appreciate you playing along. <laughs> You're so damn condescending. Anyway, thanks for saving me. Uh... It's Alice. Alice! What a wonderful name! She didn't remember me. But perhaps that was to be expected. She wasn't the same girl I knew. But a new story was about to unfold, and she didn't need more information than was strictly necessary. Say, do you know who I am? 
What? You think you're famous or something? Not only are you condescending, you're completely self-obsessed. How would I possibly know who you are? You don't? But back when the darkness attacked, you called me a selfish, weak, pathetic fool who can't do anything on my own and all that. Or were you not talking to me when you said that? Who knows? Not only that, but when you ask me, you don't know who you are, correct? You implied that you knew I had amnesia. Doesn't that mean you know more about me than I do? Yeah, I do. Unsurprisingly, she was just as sharp as her progenitor. I knew it! You're such an airhead. One minute your life is in danger, and the next you're practically laughing it off. Well, yeah, the crisis has been averted. Ever heard of out of the frying pan and into the fire? I don't see any fire around here. Besides, I've got you. You think I'm going to save you? Typical fake feminist. You scream about how you hate gender roles, but the second it's inconvenient for you, you want them back. No, I don't expect you to save me. But as long as you're around, I have nothing to fear. Oh, and obviously, if you're ever in trouble, I'm happy to help you. And what if you're in trouble? I'd certainly appreciate it if you lent a hand. It always comes back to that, doesn't it? <laughs> we arrived at the crystal mirror. The prince of the first story had already been determined. Looks like it'll let us through. Arsa. Hmm? What's up? What are you planning to do? Escape from this world, obviously. Why? If this is a dream, then anything you do will be pointless. Maybe. Or maybe it's a lucid dream and I can control the outcome at will. And if that's the case, I'd like to try and brighten this place up a bit. You're honestly so self-centered. You don't even know that the person having this dream wants you to do that. Dreams are just that. Dreams. The more enjoyable it is, the sadder you'll be when you wake up. So you think I should just shrug my shoulders and give up? Maybe the dreamer would be better off never waking up. Look, I know I'm just some selfish frou-frou girl like you said. But I want this dream to be so much fun that they wake from it feeling warm and fuzzy. Besides, if I'm literally part of this dream right now, then that means my viewpoint is at least partially the dreamer's too. I mean, think about it. If this is a dream, then you and I share the same consciousness. Point taken. Knowing you, you can make it happen, Arisa. Darn right I can! I promise to help her. But I was not her prince. I was a side character designed to spice up the main story. I existed both here in the darkness, and occasionally in the Looking Glass world as well. Good grief, what is she doing? It's you! Hey, psycho! What? Are you crazy or just plain stupid? Got a few screws loose up there? Or did you even have any to begin with? You've been- ah, 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 Non-stop since yesterday and it's pissing me off! You must be some kind of zombie, huh? Because clearly your brain's rotted to the point where you've lost all speech function. In the Looking Glass world, certain details change depending on the story. She would always forget that she first met me in the darkness. But I didn't really mind it. I watch from the sidelines as the prince and princess pledge their love. Man, you and the wizard really do have a lot in common. You're, you're like watching stuff from the sidelines. You're a side character that's moving the plot along when you need to. Existing in darkness and in the world. And, I mean, you didn't have to kill her, but you did have to watch it, I guess. 
Whenever she messed up, she was brutally killed off. Afterwards, a new version of her would spawn in into the world. Alistair, how about you wake the hell up already? She's going to keep doing this until you show up, you know. But my voice still didn't reach him. That said, we were slowly getting closer. Inch by inch. Every time she saved one of the souls sleeping inside Alistair, I felt him regain some of his self. And in exchange, I was slowly losing mine. Where am I? I keep walking and walking, but I can't seem to find a single exit. It's so dark I can't see a thing. I can't even tell how far I've walked or how much time has passed. What am I doing here? Was I always alone, or did I lose someone along the way? I finally found you! Whoa! So tell me, who are you? What are you doing here? Do you know where we are? How the hell should I know? You think you can just show up out of nowhere and interrupt me mid-sentence so you can tackle me to the ground? You're hurting me, fat ass! Could you get off of me already? What's your name, anyway? Uh, hello? Did you hear anything I just said? Are you brain dead? Or are you a narcissist who loves the sound of your own voice so much that you'll happily ignore what anyone else has to say? Didn't anyone ever teach you the polite way to ask someone's name is to start by offering your own? Seriously, get the hell off of me! Oh, I'm sorry. I was just so happy to see you, I couldn't help it. Finally. Thank you! For a self-obsessed half-wit, at least you have the sense to listen, I'll give you that. Now maybe I won't suffocate to death. The thing is, um... I don't remember what my name is, or even what I'm doing here. So you can't introduce yourself? What, you got amnesia or something? Most likely, yes. I've been trying to remember, but for some reason I just can't. Almost like I'm not myself. Everything's so fuzzy. Interesting. That's all you have to say? When I asked if you had amnesia, it was a little more than a guess based on the personal details you offered to me unprompted. In other words, it was just a reflex. A counter. Lip service, if you will. Rest assured, I haven't a single scintilla of interest in you, much less sympathy. Yeah, I guess that's fair. We've only just met, after all. So, what's your name? Who are you? Can you tell me where we are? You really don't know when to quit, do you? You know what they call people like you? Ditsy. Insensitive. Clueless. You're no basket of kittens yourself. Oh, but I'd say I'm a saint compared to most people. Look at me, wasting my valuable time on a rude and thoughtless bore such as yourself. If you don't like me, you don't have to talk to me. Simple as that. If I didn't like you, we wouldn't be here right now. What are you, some kind of masochist? Listen, can we talk about you for a while? I want to know more about you. Forget about me. Shouldn't you want to know more about yourself? You do have amnesia, right? Well, yes, but... Look, I spent all that time wandering alone in the dark, and now I finally found you. Of course I'm going to be more curious about you. You don't even know your own name and yet you'd rather a stranger tell you his. You're an odd one, to be sure. You think so? Obviously. How else am I meant to describe you? Weird. Abnormal. One corndog shy of a picnic. I gotta say, if for no other reason, I'm so happy to be going back through, the, through all of these just to get all of Alice's insults one more time, because they are mwah, chef's kiss. Am I really that strange? Oh, I know. In that case, how about you choose a name for me? Excuse me? Whoa there, lady. Hold on a minute. How the hell did you come to that conclusion? 
Well, you said it's odd for me to ask a stranger his name when I don't even know my own. But I can't remember it, and you're the only other person here. And on top of that, you want me to introduce myself first. So if you choose my name for me, I'll have a name I can introduce myself with. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Logic? Every time she saved someone new, a piece of me went back to Alistair. Like a promotion. Once I reach the other side of the board, I won't be a pawn anymore. 